What's up, guys? So I just wanted to hop on here really quick. Um, as you guys know, I'm the sales CEO. Uh, my name is Corey Barrier, and I, I help people um, with their sales, right? Sales process, company culture. But I thought I'd share a story with you. And I just, I thought back as, I thought back why I struggled so hard in sales for so many years. And the real reason is because, to be honest with you, I was broke. And, 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 and because I was broke, I didn't have money. And because I didn't have money, I was broke, right? So here, here's when things changed. When I realized that I'm sure some of you have probably gone through this, right? I mean, most salespeople probably don't start out making, you know, um, you know, half a million dollars a year or $2 million a year, or even a hundred thousand dollars a year for that matter. I mean, let's just be honest. Like you got to start somewhere and in sales, usually you got to start at the bottom and usually you don't start with like a full pipeline. Right. And I, I, I always wondered, wow, why is that guy killing it? And I'm not, why is this guy doing what he's doing? And I'm not right. Victim, victim, victim. And so the reality is I wasn't the victim. I just played the victim. And, and I'm sure have you, I'm sure you guys probably have done that. If you have just drop a quick comment in the blog, in the comments to saying, hell yeah, that, you know, that's been me. Um, but let me tell you the reason I sold, you know, let's just take, for example, um, me selling, uh, if, if I'm, if I'm at a Lexus dealership and I'm selling Lexuses, right. I was, I couldn't afford a Lexus. So I would sell, I would try to explain to my customer why they needed a Lexus. But the problem is I didn't really believe. I didn't think I could afford a Lexus because I couldn't afford a Lexus and, and, and oh, got my words tied. I couldn't afford a Lexus. So what happened was I would have conversations with the customers that would come in and I would try, try to sell them a Lexus. And, and that's part of where I went wrong because I was trying to sell them something that I couldn't buy. I was trying to sell them a product that I, I knew in the back of my mind, I was going to go out back and climb in my, um, I had a, a, like a used Acura at the time. Um, and like, I was trying to sell, you know, a 60, 70, $80,000 product driving a used Acura, Acura. Now you may be asking yourself, well, would you have to have a new Lexus to sell a new Lexus? Not necessarily. No, but you have to think about your customer and you got to think about why they're buying the Lexus. You got to think about maybe you know, you, you got to think about their pocketbook, not yours, right? And so here's where, and, and that's where I failed at so many sales jobs, right? We would run a credit app when I was younger, you know, 20 in my 20s, we'd run a credit app and my credit sucked, right? And I would attract people that had shitty credit and, and I would project onto them, well, you know, I, I don't know how your credit score is, but, uh, you know, we get, sometimes we get people approved, right? Because I didn't believe they would be approved. And then when they got approved, I was like, ah, right. I mean, I, if you're in sales and you're watching this, you've been there. I know you have because I've done so many different sales jobs and, and it wasn't until just the past few years that I've realized that my customer's bank account's not my bank account, right? And my bank account's not their bank account. So if I'm trying to sell you a 200 or a $2 million home and I live in the in apartment complex, it's really hard for the brain to realize that it's really hard. Well, it's really hard for the brain to, to, to convey um, the need for a $2 million home if I live in an apartment, right? I mean, let's just be honest. We've all had a sales job 
and, and we've all started a sales job at some point or another. And usually if you work on commission, and it, that, then you have to start at zero, right? Commission doesn't pay unless you sell the product or service. And so, so guess what, dude? Like, unless you start a sales job, which is not really a sales job if you have a salary, in my opinion, um, well, salary plus commission. But let me ask you, what if you had a choice between making a salary, let's just say even, let's say it's $150,000 a year, or if you had the opportunity to make commission on what you sell, which one are you going to take? Now, if you're my kind of salesperson, you're taking the commission, right? Because you know that you can sell more than what that salary position is going to pay, right? Anybody that's been in sales that's good knows you don't take the salary position ever. The reason the salary position is there is for the salesperson that's not as good as the person on commission, right? I can't tell you how many interviews of people that I've done to hire that if I give them the option, hey, I'm going to give you a $75,000 salary or zilch and you can make commission. I know who I'm looking at. I know who I'm talking to when they answer that one question. So how do you answer the question? That's my question to you. How do you answer that question? Do you take commission or do you take the salary? Because if you take the salary, then I'm guessing you're not a, you're not a success in sales for sure. Because salary doesn't provide you the leverage to make more money, right? It gives you a flat rate, no matter what, kind of like Amazon Prime, right? Order Prime, get shipped to you in two days, done, right? And you pay a flat fee for that. If you had to pay for the, the postage that it costs for all the shit you buy on Amazon or all the shit that I buy on Amazon, oh my God, I'd have to have a second job because the amount of money that I would spend is astronomically more than Amazon Prime. But I pay my $100 a year, I think is what it is. Maybe it's two, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, it's worth every freaking dime of it because it doesn't matter if I order 12 things a day or if I order 12 things a year, I still pay the same amount. So if you're in sales and you're a salesperson and you're on salary, you have zero incentive to get better, right? And if your company is sells a product or service that's a high ticket item, let's just take a plumbing company that I work with, right? One of my one of my clients that I work with, I work with his sales team and the, his company, and, and 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 the sales guys struggle. And the reason the sales guys struggle is because they're selling from their pocket, not the customers. If if I'm a sales guy making a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you quote me a price for a plumbing job that's forty five thousand dollars a year, that's a hard pill to swallow. Like I can't see spending six months of work of the salary I'm getting paid or the commission that I get paid on my plumbing, right? But if I make a half a million dollars a year. What the hell's forty five thousand dollars? I don't want to spend it forty five thousand dollars on my plumbing, but I can I can conceptualize spending forty five thousand dollars on plumbing, right? So just like you, when you go to the store, you know how much money you go in there with to buy whatever it is you need to buy, and if something is not lining up with your blueprint, so to speak, your sales blueprint, it doesn't fit. So. So what I'm trying, my, my point in telling you this story is that I want you to understand if you're in sales and you're selling a high ticket item, you need to, you need to sell from your customer's pocket, not yours. Because if you're not making enough money right now, if you're not making, you know, enough money to purchase your product or service, then most likely you're coming across as incongruent. And what that means is I may be smiling, saying, hey, I'm so excited to see you. And you could see in there, right? It's so opposed to me saying, 
Hey, dude, so excited to see you. You see the difference? I said the same exact words, but it was incongruent the first time. The second time, I was me, right? I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see you, right? It's a big difference. And so if you're in sales and you're starting to suck ass and you're starting to lose, then check what you're selling, right? Check yourself. Stop selling from your pocket and sell from your client's pocket. All right, guys. So listen, do me a favor. If you got any value out of this video, drop a comment below and give me a hell yeah. If you've been in a place where you've had very little money or the bills were stacking up or you were a car payment or two behind or maybe a house payment behind or maybe an apartment payment, whatever, and you're at that point where you just don't know if you're going to make it anymore, I would suggest that you think about the things that I've said in this video, rewatch it because it's super important. I see this all the time with sales guys, all the time. I mean, here's, you know, the Lexus dealership example I gave you was exactly what I went through at the Lexus dealership. So um, I just happened to be the buyer, right? I mean, I did, I, I was the buyer, but my sales guy, was incongruent. He couldn't really understand why I would spend 40, I think it was 48 or 47, 47, 48, 49 thousand dollars on a car. So man, this thing is like badass, man. This thing is so you could tell this is something he would love to have, right? But you could also tell, as I said, something he would love to have, meaning he can't afford to buy it. And sure enough, I saw him get in his old Acura when he left, right? And I knew when I had the conversation, he, the congruency wasn't there. And I can't, listen, and if you're a business owner and your sales team is not doing well right now, this is probably why their mindset is stuck in a place that they don't know how to break through that. They don't know what to say because they're just not putting themselves in the customer's shoes. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you did share it, uh, listen, drop that comment below and uh, look forward to hearing from you.